Xiaomi Mi Air Dots are great. And there's a lot of things I like about them. But I think the Xiaomi neckband headphones are a little bit better. Hey, my name is Mitchell. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about the tech I use, cell phones, tablets, drones, headphones, things like that. If you're looking to purchase any of these headphones, I'll have links to them on Gearbest, AliExpress, Banggood, and Amazon if available. I really appreciate if you guys support my channel. Also, if you're on Telegram, you should join my Telegram group. Okay, let's jump into the video. So the first thing I wanna talk about when comparing the Mi Air Dots to the Xiaomi neckband headphones is the design. And it's one thing that I think Xiaomi got really perfect with these headphones. The neckband is slightly more premium than other neckbands for headphones that I've used. The feel of them is just very, very substantial. The neckband itself is made from a thick and really kind of sturdy TPU feeling material. The end caps are brushed aluminum and the buttons have a really nice tactile clicky feel. And they just, it feels really, really nice. And it's a, it's a great kind of experience when using them around your neck. Also, the ends of them are magnetic. And one thing that these headphones do incredibly well is design and aesthetic. Uh, just for context, I work at one of the uh, most expensive, nicest schools in Hanoi, Vietnam. And I used to wear neckband headphones in all the time. I used to use my old LG Tone uh, headphones. And just the aesthetic to them, the, the shiny plastic, it felt very out of place uh, when I was wearing a, a button-down shirt and a tie. So the thing that these headphones nail with their aesthetic, is it's really that they're unassuming, uh, they're not flashy, they're very, very simple, and they look just as good when you're wearing nice clothing as they do uh, when you're working out. So they're really, really versatile. Now to touch on the Mi Air Dots, I've done a ton of videos for you guys about them and I'll have a link to a playlist up here. Uh, but the overall aesthetic of them, uh, at least of the case, is a very, very cheap feeling thin plastic that glows. Uh, at night, you can see like the headphones glow on the inside of them uh, at night. The actual air dots themselves are small, very plasticky feeling, but not cheap plasticky, just not premium plasticky. They're really, really small. They fit in your ear very kind of seamlessly. Uh, they do a great job of staying in your ear and kind of isolating you from the outside. They have a touch control portion of it up top. Uh, I've covered all this stuff before. Um, and I, again, like I said, if you have more questions about them, I'll link you guys to a playlist with that content down below. Uh, but overall, the thing that these really nail with the design is that they're, it's a small package, right? It's got a big battery and you'll get about 12 to 14 hours of playback uh, with the included battery case and they last for about four hours. I think the longest I've worn them nonstop, it's been about three, three and a half hours and they were at 20 or 30% battery um, when I checked on my device. So uh, the, the the design of these is, is really great in regards to the fact that it's simple. Um, both of them use micro USB to charge, which is kind of a disappointment, USB-C all things, but in that case, or in that instance, one is not better than the other. Quickly to talk about the controls. On the uh, neckband headphones, we have a start, stop button, uh, long press for Google Assistant. We have the volume up, volume down, single press to, to pause, double press to skip forward. The controls work great. They work on my girlfriend's iPhone, they work on my Android phones. So no issues with them. With the Mi Air Dots on the other hand, and this is something I've covered in previous videos, the touch controls can be very temperamental. They have good like touch rejection in that if they're, they're touching part of your ears, you definitely have to like move them in a way that either breaks that so you can double tap them, but they are not reliable in regards to being activated uh, with the touch sensitive controls. And that can be really, really annoying. But the touch controls that we have is single tap to uh, play pause, double tap for voice commands, and then everything else past that, 
you have to use the voice commands for it. That being said, the microphone on these for those voice commands is terrible. I'll have a link up here to a video where I give you guys a demonstration of what the audio quality is in regards to the microphones on these, and it is a nightmare. Now, the sound quality. Now, again, this is somewhere that these neckband headphones really surpass the, the air dots. Um, and these sound really, really good. They're not as bass heavy as the air dots. They sound closer to my Mi Piston Pro headphones, the Xiaomi ones with the dual drivers, uh, and those sound fantastic. But these sound a little warm, not as like kind of thumpy and bassy as these, but I wouldn't say that these are amazing. They're just tangibly better than these. Great detail with these, good bass, but not kind of thumpy bass. The highs do not sound tinny, but you don't have as much accentuation in the sound. Overall, these are great for like everyday use. Now the sound quality out of the Air Dots is very, very bass heavy, not in like a, a necessarily like a good way. One thing that I like about custom ROMs is that you have an EQ that's built in and that EQ usually works over Bluetooth. So for these, I've punched up the uh, middle of the EQ to give me more of, of, of the, a more even sound. These are very, very bass heavy. The sound quality is good, but it's not better than these. These are Bluetooth 4.2 versus these being 5.0. Now, next up, and something that I kind of want to close on is convenience. And I'm gonna do a whole separate video about how truly wireless headphones are not more convenient than other wireless headphones. What you need to know is that both of these headphones do a great job sealing out outside noise. So with these, if you need to, for some reason, take them out, right, and, and break the seal, uh, they just fit right around your neck, right? And they have the little magnet, and it's great. And then when you want to put them on, you can just do this, or you can take one out, but they're always right there. So it makes it really, really good if you're at a workplace that would allow you to wear headphones because you can just take them out, they stay right where they go, they're, they're not shifting around. Whereas these, being truly wireless and having such a great seal, if someone comes up to you or if for some reason you need to interact with the outside world, leaving them in your ear, there is enough sound isolation that it can make that difficult. Now, for me, that is significantly more exaggerated because I live in Vietnam. So most people, even if they speak English or I'm trying to speak Vietnamese to them, the, there is somewhat of a language barrier. So I'm constantly having to take these out if I have to interact with the outside world. And that way, these are better. Uh, it's not something that necessarily makes these bad, but it's just a characteristic of all wireless headphones. Uh, where these things really, really shine is if you're doing physical activity or you can just uninterrupted listen to music. So if you're like working out or going for a walk or you know, any variety of things, right? Which one is a better value? Now, these headphones, I think, retail for around 55 bucks, uh, if I'm not mistaken, whereas these, we're seeing these fluctuate in price between like 38 bucks and like 65, 70 bucks online. So the question comes down to what is a better value? And so I, I really gotta say that in a lot of ways, these are kind of a novelty, but in regards to like practical use, I think these are a better value for a couple of reasons. One, I know how these are constructed, right? Or at least how the case for these is constructed. And the case is definitely a failure point, especially if you ever like drop it or it falls off of a table or something like that. So this is a failure point. On top of that, there's a lot of things that can fail and fail kind of easily. Whereas these, for a slightly more premium price, I think, I think they're like 55 or 60 bucks on Gearbest. For that, I feel like I'm getting a lot more for my money, especially because I've owned three pairs of headphones in a similar style to this. I've owned uh, the LG Tone Pro, and then I own like another one, but those were each like around 60 
to 75 bucks uh, MSRP. And these feel the best. They feel the, the most well-constructed, they feel the most well thought out. And on top of that, they don't look kind of cheap and, and you can really use these in a lot of different environments and they're not gonna stick out. So in a lot of ways, these are great for like the like minority of people that can just put headphones in for two hours on end and just go throughout the world and not have to worry about that. Whereas these are better for, I feel like more people that have to interact with the outside world or you might be listening to them at work or you can go ahead and just do one in or if you need to make phone calls, uh, the microphone here is placed better. I haven't had a chance to use the microphone, um, but I'll go ahead and annotate something if uh, I have an experience with that. So uh, that is kind of what we're gonna end on. It's not that one of these is bad and one of these is good, but I think that one of these is just a better value for more consumers than the other. So we're gonna close on that. Uh, like I said, if you guys want to buy any of these things, support the show and go ahead and use the affiliate links. If you want to talk about this or if you guys want input for the next videos that I should make, go ahead and join my Telegram group link in the description down below. I also have a Telegram channel where I do announcements, share videos, stuff like that. Uh, I've got Instagram and Facebook groups and all that stuff. Link to all that stuff down below. Look, I like interacting with you guys. I try to take as much feedback as I can from my audience to make more content. So if you want me to do something specific, let me know. Till next time, it's been Mitchell coming to you from Hanoi. Shalom.